É, Siddhartha, é, você falou aqui hoje, e já escreveu sobre isso também, sobre o quanto essa pandemia revelou a falta de resiliência do, do sistema é, de saúde americano, né? E, e você fez uma análise disso, é, dizendo que essa falta de resiliência está tá, tá ligada à falta daquilo que você chama, com essa palavra que eu amo do inglês, que é slack, que é traduzida por uma palavra que eu amo também do português, que é folga. A falta de folga nos nossos sistemas. Eu queria que você falasse um pouco sobre isso é, e talvez até extrapolando para além da medicina. Será que isso é uma doença da nossa sociedade contemporânea? Será que a gente espremeu tanto as coisas que agora os nossos sistemas não têm folga e eles não são mais resilientes? Sim, muito bem. Então, acho que... E isso volta para a outra pergunta que foi perguntada antes sobre... Resilience in medical systems. So I think that essential systems like medicine, uh, defense, um, um, uh, food production, um, things that are essential for, the, for a nation to be safe and to work uh, need to have built into them a certain degree of um, slack or uh, resilience. Um, and by slack, I mean that it should not be operating. We, uh, in, in most businesses, uh, we have begun to operate with the thinnest possible margin and the least possible waste uh, in order to maximize profits and to make the most efficient systems. The most efficient systems have, unfortunately, uh, the property that they can be compromised in their ability because they are so reliant on efficiency They can, compromise, they can be compromised in their ability to have um, resilience because there is, there is no waste. So if one part is missing, all of a sudden the entire production line goes to a halt. Um, and so um, we need to, one thing we need to understand is uh, how to, um, I would say how to relax. Um, and by relax, I mean, Uh, in, a, in a very um, thoughtful manner, how we might be able to design systems that have built into them some capacity such that if there is a break um, in, the, in the production line, that they can recover from that production line. And it usually means sacrificing some of the efficiency and leanness Uh, with which these businesses are run. So they, we have to identify the ones that are essential, and I named some of them, medicine, uh, food production, um, defense strategy, uh, transportation, um, uh, the movement of essential goods, etc. All of these that uh, are people rely on for their, um, I would say, for their uh, you know, essential necessities have to build in uh, systems of Slack. Um, one example that I often give in, um, that I gave in the New Yorker article uh, was Toyota. Um, the, the company Toyota suffered a very bad uh, a fire and essentially almost uh, the, the company was almost uh, eradicated because one essential part uh, of, of the, the Toyota cars uh, became it was impossible, they didn't produce it. Um, what they learned from that is that they had to create systems by which that part uh, was appropriately um, uh, distributed in its production so that they wouldn't be reliant on a single uh, pipeline or a single choke point in that pipeline. Because if that choke point has a hazard of some sort, a fire, then the entire production ceases. So. This is true for every company, but it's particularly true for companies or governments that are providing essential goods. And one of the compromises that you have to make in order to create resilience or slack is a compromise in efficiency. Because, you know, it's much more efficient, of course, to produce just one part in one place. Um, and maybe you are producing it very cheaply in China. Uh, the problem is that if, the, if that factory in China has a problem, say, a, an, you know, in this case, an, a national pandemic such that all of a sudden either the factory isn't functioning or they're not able to export goods anymore, then all of a sudden you're stuck without ventilators. Um, that means that that system didn't have or doesn't have 
an appropriate degree of resilience and it needs to be measured. That is a measurable quantity. And for essential medical goods, essential goods, we need to be able to measure it. And when it falls below the measure, we need to have interventions, federal interventions that allow us to uh, return it back to its normal state with a little bit of slack.